Good morning. No, wait. Well, two, three, two, one. Good morning. Okay, that's not gonna go. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good Welcome morning. back to the Transport Bandits. I'm Cheryl. I'm Jeff, or Mr. Dimples. And we have Alan. There he is. You remember Alan from Alaska? And we have Lynn. He's there. Hey, Lynn. No, he's he's playing on his phone right there. That that guy right there. <laughs> and we're here at the Amish Walmart. You see, Mr. Bones is our traveling companion right there. He doesn't care. All and the way from home, right here. We are gonna travel with Alan all the way across the country to Abbotsford, British Columbia. And that is like 2,300 miles across the country. Yeah, and you've got a motorhome. I've got a Class B motorhome. Jeff has a... Outback. Outback travel trailer. And Alan, right there. I don't know what Oh, Alan's wait, got. look. See, that's Molly right there. His puppy Molly. But Molly's going to be left here, so with a friend while we go to Canada. Um, so he's going to take Molly down and leave Molly with a good trusted friend. We're going to go pick up our units and um, do our PTI. There he is. Okay. Roll down the window. Say good morning to YouTube, Alan. Good morning, YouTube. Yeah. Everybody Camera knows Alan. had to get out of the truck. Oh yeah, he's 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 our star. You know that, right? You bet. He's he's our get reoccurring my, guest gotta role. With, gotta be my with my number one. Yeah. Okay. Yep, that's it right there. So we're gonna go do our PTI on my Class B Canna Dream. And Jeff has an Outback travel trailer and Alan? Montana. You have a fifth, fifth wheel. Fifth wheel Montana, hey. so we got uh that's a class A too. Hey. I wonder if your Canna Dream will be driven by Apollo. Oh, can a dream driven by Apollo. You That's guys remember that video? Back, well, back, is that what it says? Driven by Apollo. The last so, one said driven by Apollo. Yeah, so you guys can just call me Apollo from here on out. Well, I'm going to go get Molly's dog food and I'm going to run down to Topeka, drop her off, right. and then I'll be back. Because he, okay. he's leaving Molly with a trusted friend while we drive 2,300 miles across the country. You're coming with us. Let's go. Alan, us. And Lynn. Now, Lynn's not going with us. That's a shame. <laughs> but isn't that a nice truck trio right there? Really nice. All right, Alan. We'll see you in a minute. Got a couple of transporters here. <sighs> We've been home for the last couple of weeks. We got some work done on the truck. Oh, yeah, we did tons of maintenance. And I won't get into all that boring stuff. They're gonna want to know what maintenance we did. We got us some. We're trying out some brand new tires, as you know, yep. or maybe didn't tires. know. We got the Firestone Destination XT. We're gonna try those out because we were running the Michelin Agilis Cross Climate tires. We were very happy with them, but yep. they're expensive. Yeah, but um, they both have the Three Peak Snow Rating. Yeah, and they're a commercial three, tire. Three Peak Snow Rating tires are fantastic. Ten ply commercial rated yeah. so we're going to try those Holland out we've had stuff. those recommended by Lynn and Holland Paws yeah. check out Holland Paws YouTube channel if you haven't done so already that's a great YouTube channel to find out some some great information on transporting Tim on Holland Paws mm -hmm. and then also maintenance wise wait a minute are you going to tell them what you got your Firestone destination XT tires for no it's embarrassing Cheryl my man he <laughs> he is the biggest negotiator ever okay so all four tires would have been how much About thirteen hundred dollars this is my man he's the master negotiator thirteen hundred dollar tires for a set of all four mm -hmm. and uh what did you get them for nine hundred and twelve dollars he jewed them down to nine hundred and twelve dollars not bad for a set of four tires yeah i don't know why he kept the twelve dollars on there i couldn't <laughs> get him down to 900. <laughs> anyway i'm proud of him <laughs> he never walks away paying exactly full price do you <laughs> 
And anyway, we installed the high idle switch. So, well, you know. It's not up here. I'm not sure why it's all pointing. Oh, there. I don't. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to point up there. Um, hey, there's Donaloo. Say hey, Donaloo. Hey, there's Donaloo. She gave, him, she gave me all my great towels, that my Harley Davidson towels. Here's Kenny. Look, there's Kenny right here. Say hey, Kenny. Hey. Hey, you two people. <laughs> there's my girl right there. Okay, I'm gonna go talk to Donald. Then we're going into the office. Then I'm picking up my can of dream. Then Jeff is gonna go get his travel trailer and we're headed to BC. I've located my can of dream. Right here is my little Class B can of dream. And we are going to go get Jeff's travel trailer going all the way to Abbotsford. We're going to test out those new tires. And I was telling you about that high idle switch. We ran it last night. And it was only, it uses a little more than if we didn't have it. But I think we only used about five gallons of fuel running the high idle last night. But I'm getting in that now. He's going to go pick up his. We're going to meet up with Al and get going. We're going to try and make it at least to Iowa 80 tonight. Since we can't deliver until Monday, we got like six days to get out there. There's a snowstorm out in Idaho, Montana. So that's why we can't make it by Friday. So again, we're caught up a little bit by weather. But we can have the fun side of RV transport. We might stop again at Wall Drug. We might um, go to Rapid City Harley-Davidson. We might even get a steak at Broken Arrow Steakhouse. This is the Canna Dream. This is a Beyond by Ford. And yes, it is driven by Apollo right there. Just call me Apollo. Let's go head across the country. You're coming with us. Let's go. To the TA in Morris, Illinois. We right. always stop here because they have strawberry pillows. Right. Alan doesn't even know what a strawberry I pillow is. I have no idea. He's going like to find out. So <laughs> <I won't hear. laughs> strawberry pillows right here at the TA in Morris. Here's my can of dream. I parked it right there. Jeff is back here and Alan's on the other side of him with that big class A. We're making pretty good time. We may make it further than Iowa 80 today. And it, Al's not back there with a big class A. Al's back there with a fifth wheel, that's a CDL one. <laughs> oh, oh why did, what did I keep saying class A? Sorry, it's <laughs> dumb blonde moment. <laughs> Let's go get our strawberry pillow and see if that makes me any smarter. <laughs> Apollo getting a strawberry pillow. All right, let's do it. Strawberry pillow. Jeff showed him the strawberry pillow. All right, do you see what a strawberry pillow is? It's a giant pastry full of like whipped Bavarian whipped cream and strawberries. But look at the desserts they have in here. I mean, it's amazing the wonderful bakery items like that they that. produce here. This is the restaurant that they have here and it's a really good restaurant with great, great, fantastic desserts. Yeah. Look at these. Hold my strawberry pillow. Got your strawberry pillow? Yeah, hold it. All right. But, hey, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to go to the restroom and make room for the strawberry pillow. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Alan, you getting anything? Uh, nothing here. All right, we're going to keep on traveling. Keep on traveling or... Look at these, look at these cream rolls. Look how big that is. They have a great bakery. Fantastic. And I'm getting me some triangles because I accidentally left my triangles at home and I have to have those in the uh, motorhome with me. So I'm going to have to pick them up here before I get pulled over for a DT inspection and be caught without my triangles. A strawberry pillow. They're delicious. Take a look at that. That is some good stuff there. It's a few hours later. We've made it here to Iowa 80. Although we get our fuel discount right across the street at the pilot station. 
and then we're gonna hop over to Iowa 80 and get a bite to eat and then keep rolling we believe and uh, I'm fueling up here out front since I have the motor home and it's gas I don't go to the truck pumps you know I have to get it right here but I always reuse straight. my rewards card here at the pump but then I use that app that Flying J app to get the code so Jeff's uh, fuel will go on our points as well and that's how we get free showers free drinks uh, candy bars stuff like that but mostly for free showers but uh, we're gonna keep on rolling we are still debating on whether to keep rolling and try and make that Friday at 3 p.m. delivery time it's all going to depend on the weather and we don't know if we can get across um, that pass between Montana and Idaho and the Snoqualmie Pass in Washington. It's all going to depend on weather. But if we can beat that storm that's coming in in two days, we're in Iowa. That's all the way in Idaho. That storm is coming on Thursday, 100% chance. There's a trucker. And um, we're going to try and beat that storm going across those two passes and get them delivered by Friday at 3 p.m. But we may not. Let's find out. So, so far at Goshen, I put in $60 to get a full tank. And now here at Walcott, Iowa, I've put in $57. It, the price for regular gas is $313. Um, that's not that great. I got it for $315 in Goshen. Um, so it is a little bit cheaper, a couple cents cheaper. So, you know, we don't get those discounts with the motorhome units. This thing is getting 13.2 miles per gallon. That's pretty good. Pretty good. So I'm really happy with that. Do you guys want to take a look inside the Canadrine? This is the Canadrine Van Life Van. So here is my cockpit. I love these Ford Beyonds. Um, we have a really large screen. Everything's digitized um, with the heating and the radio. And because it's going to Canada, they always want you to stay safe. Drive on your right. Use a spotter to help direct you. Watch out for height. Slow down on gravel and stay on the road. Watch out. Dusk and dawn brings out the wildlife. Canadians are so considerate. This is actually one of those units that you can rent. Um, and I believe that people, you know, like rent these to go on vacation. So if it's not something that somebody would buy, this is one of those that uh, vacationers can rent. Nice sink here, nice rounded sink. Um, a couple little seats. That would fold out to make a bed in the back. You have your air conditioning, plenty of storage, microwave refrigerator nice big shower well you know big for a van for Pete's sakes that's pretty nice right there the shower and toilet is all in one there and overhead compartments there's all your electronic controls Canadream is one of the best um, motorhomes that I can ask for to drive especially these uh, Canadream class B motorhomes my fuel I'm over here at Iowa 80 and here comes my sweetie now there he is and there's his Outback ultralight how you doing yay <laughs> Yep, that's how we greet each other when we get out of the truck. Like your dog does when you get home. And here comes Alan. He'll go and park beside us. We had to hurry up and get in here for obvious reasons. And this is Iowa 80 truck stop. Only part of the world's largest truck stop is right here. It's really cool in here. It's one of our favorite places to stop on our way out. Uh, located on, on Iowa Interstate 80. Iowa 80. The 
Alan's gonna get him a little something. We're doing our 30 minute break here at Iowa 80. You've got a, quite a few options of something to eat. You just, did you eat your, oh, what have you got? Five hour energy. Yep. Y'all are running me to death. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take the five hour energy and then I got a box of vitamins in the truck and I'm gonna eat half of them. <laughs> We're gonna keep running. <laughs> Well, we gotta beat that storm. All right, we made it to Vermilion, South Dakota. We did. And uh, we decided from all the weather reports and talking on the phone all day with all of our friends and transporters, you know who you are. Yeah, we've decided there's no need to rush. There's no need to rush because of the snowstorms and slick spots and closed interstates and everything that we're gonna come up on. There's no way we can get it to all the way to the West Coast by Friday at 3 p.m. So we're gonna go in here and take care of business and then call it a night and just have some of the fun side of RV transport and try and get it there by Monday. That's correct. So good night for tonight. We're tired, we're pooped, we've yeah. been driving all day long. And it's cold as whiz out here. <laughs> Cold as whiz. What yeah. is that? What's, I don't know. How cold is whiz? I've always heard. And what is whiz? <laughs> I've always heard whiz is cold. No, we're good. Alan's already going to bed, and then we're just gonna, you know, take our time and get it out there Monday. Yep. So we may have some fun stops along the way. That's the uh, way yeah. it goes in the yeah. winter, you they know. Take care of slick. That is slick. Yep. All right. All right. Good night, guys. We'll see y'all tomorrow. See ya. And. I just have to say, we have been on the phone with our circle of friends all day. Oh yeah. And in conference calls yeah. with all the different people all over the different yeah. co we've country. Had a, we've hosted the Transport Bandit talk show all day. <laughs> yeah, that, no, had, that nobody's a part of except us. <laughs> no, we had plenty of guest stars call in. We had guest stars. We had like, like eight people on the phone. Call and pause. Yeah. Uh, fair fair winds the following seas. We called My it. My buddy Kip. Yep. Matt, everybody, Matt yeah. yep, and other transporters have been on the phone with us on and off all day. Yeah. Between talking, we've had like six people on the phone at one time, yeah, and we yeah. have had a blast. I haven't gotten much video because I can't do video when I'm actually talking on the phone, so you guys know that. And uh, we have laughed and laughed and laughed all day. Yeah, this parking lot slick too, yeah, but uh, yeah, we don't want to drive at night when it's starting to get a little slick anyway. But hopefully we will get out of here tomorrow. But I just want to say to all my transporter friends, all our transporter friends, thank you for putting up with him. <laughs> See you guys in the morning. We love you guys. Transport Bandits, huh? out for tonight only. Okay, we've got a tremendous side wind. And even though I'm not going out of my lane because the wind hits this unit from the side so hard, do you guys see that driver alert warning rest now? That's just where the wind is pushing this van so hard. We are traveling north on I-29, so we have a side wind. Once we go about another 12 miles, we'll hit Sioux Falls and turn west so we're hoping i mean it's it's not good but at least we'll be having a headwind which is better than a side wind and which is worse than a tailwind you know in category you want tailwind is the best headwind less than that and side wind is your absolute worst now we can continue to roll because we're at 23.8 for a sustained wind 
we use, I use that and I know that because we use wind compass and it tells you exactly what the wind is at your current location. If the wind reaches 25 sustained miles per hour, then we shut it down until it calms down. We made it to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It's like almost right at, we would have to shut down wind, but now it will be a headwind. So um, we're gonna go in here and discuss whether to roll on in this or not. Um, I think it might get a little bit better now that it's gonna be a headwind. So I'm fueling up again. So far I have put $167 worth of fuel or gas into this unit and have made it to Sioux Falls. Um, so I'll let you know some more figures. Yesterday I was getting 13.6 on the miles per gallon. Um, Jeff and Alan are fueling up over in the truck side and then we're gonna roll west. So hopefully we'll turn west and won't have such a bad side wind. Murdo, South Dakota. I'm refueling again. Uh, we've gotten pretty bad fuel mileage um, because of the that extreme headwind that we had there for a while. But the wind has died down now, fortunately. I'm going to fuel up. We're going to head on to Wall, South Dakota. And so we're gonna, just going to take our time, have some fun. We're going to meet up with our friend, your friend, you know him, Chris James, at Wall Drug. There's Jeff and Alan. They're topping off their fuel. Let's head on down I-90 towards Wall, South Dakota. We're in the parking lot for Wall Drug. There's Mr. Chris James right now. It is very snowy. This is very icy. This is not slushy at all. It's very hard and icy. Very slick. Uh, there's Alan getting out. He's never been to Wall Drug before. Remember we brought Chris to Wall Drug and we did a whole video on Wall Drug. So you need to go check that out. There is plenty of parking. This, this is all like the back side of Wall Drug. Like right there's Wall Drug. That's the back side. The main street is on the other side and I have parked right here. This entire lot is for RV parking. So there's plenty of parking here if you wanna bring your RV and visit Wall Drug. It's exit 110 off of I-90. Now we're gonna go get us, a, see if they have available. It's off season, so there's not gonna be very many people there probably. And they may not even have a hot beef sandwich. Hey, Chris. Everybody knows Chris James! Hello. And look, there he is. There's the Rip puppy. There's the puppy. Right, going back, Rip. Bye, Rip. We're do we'll be back in a few minutes. Let's go get us some lunch. Hey, Chris, how you doing? How you doing? Cool. Every everybody cool. remembers Chris, right? Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. We're going to take Al to a wall drug. He's never, never stopped in never there. Stopped in here. 
because Al is a hardcore. Give him the hardcore look, just Al. There you go, hardcore transporter. <laughs> get there, get it done, get back, get another one. So we are educating Al on the fun side of RV transport. And I'm getting the education and loving every minute of it. Awesome. Bye, Rip. We'll see you in a few minutes. He's getting in the back, gonna take a nap. Nope. There he is. There he is. There is the Badlands Harley Davidson. You guys know we all come here in Sturgis and this place is rocking and full of bikes. Now this but, is where the fire was, right? Oh well, yeah, the big fire that was across the street. Yep. All right, guys, we're going to come out here and get ourselves a photo shoot because you know I like taking pictures. This is Main Street, Wall, South Dakota. Here we are at Wall Drug, Chris, Allen, Jeff, and me. Let's go in. Thank you, Mr. Al. You're quite welcome. And welcome to a completely desolate wall drug. <laughs> it's a completely different experience because usually this is just jam-packed full of people. But it, this is such a fun place to come, especially in the summertime. There's all kinds of quirky, nostalgic, Old West, fun things to do here. All these are little shops that are here. And they've got the restaurant, and they've got the outback back there. There you go, Al. You finally found you a woman. I found my woman. There you go. I you, found my woman. You got to be careful, though. She was making out Google Eyes at Jeff earlier last year. That's perfect. There's the Traveler's Chapel. We always go in there and say a little prayer. We've got an art gallery, poster shop. This is just a fun place to come. It's just a fun stop. Fun shop. Zoltar's here. As you travel through this life. You know it's our tradition to visit Zoltar. There he is, right there. This is this is our Zoltar. You may see some more Zoltars around the country, but this is the original Zoltar. All right, Jeff. Zoltar the Gypsy, at your service. Ah, uh, today is your lucky day, my friend, for I have a fortune especially for you. Listen closely. Sometimes you can tell a wise person not only by what he says, but also by what he doesn't say. Remember, <laughs> it is much better to say little than to say too much and regret it later. Give Zoltar your treasure. I have much wisdom to share with you. Come let Zoltar tell you more. Tell him more, Jeff. <laughs> Excellent. All right. You know that's why you're so quiet all the time. Got my card. You got your you got your horoscope from yep. Zoltar. Yep. I hope it's a good one. All right, Al's gonna try him now. See what your future holds, Alan. Zoltar is here to give you the wisdom of the ancients. Do with it what you will. Destiny is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for. It is a thing to be achieved. Create your destiny wisely, my friend. And surrender a bit more wealth for more instruction from Zoltar. <laughs> Put in a bit more wealth for more instruction. <laughs> You've got your horoscope, so you're good to go. So your destiny is not chance. It's... In my hands right now. <laughs> yep. What I really love about Waldrick is the hundreds upon hundreds of historical photographs. Now that's a bear skin rug. Now what's that, buffalo? What you found, Chris? 
I found out that you have to eat dessert before you eat dinner. Oh, that's a that's a fact. I'm a southern girl. That's a southern girl. You have look at the fudge. Oh, look at all these different types of flavors. Huckleberry fudge, peanut butter chocolate, butterfinger, maple. Oh, it looks so good. So all you guys traveling on, uh, delivering that trailer? Yeah. Oh, well, we got all different trailers, each one of us. Oh, okay. Yep. You guys are pretty slow this time of year, right? Yeah. Have you Dead. ever been here when yeah. it's busy? Yes. Yep. We yep. come at Sturgis week. We brought our bikes oh, out here at Sturgis. That, so we know how that. busy this place gets. And it's crazy to see it like this where there's just no people here. Yeah. None whatsoever. It's just weird. Because this place is rocking and rolling when there's so many people uh, here. We usually average about 20,000 a day. Yeah. I oh, mean, it's summer. just jam-packed in here. Let's go to the cafe. Hey. All right, wow. let's go eat. And... And this is where we always order our hot beef sandwich when they have it. And you can still get your free donut for veterans right here. And your coffee for five cents. Five cent coffee right there. There you go, Al. Al's happy. He sees five cent coffee. That's got my name written There you go. There's Chris. Chris, what did you get? Oh, but he got the filet of fish sandwich. Awesome. All right, what did we get? We got the uh, chicken filet sandwich. The buffalo burger. Al's got a buffalo burger. Chris is working on his fish sandwich. Unfortunately, we got a fish sandwich. Yeah, the hot roast the beef. The hot roast beef was not available. And you, you love the hot roast beef sandwich so much. You'll get over it, right, Jeff? No, I will not. <laughs> you can't recover from something like that. It's devastating. So, what's your name? My name is Andrea. Hey. Hi, Andrea. How are you? I'm I've very a, well. I've got a question for you, Andrea. Uh, yes. Where do y'all harvest most of these jackalopes at? The Badlands. Badlands. The Badlands. I should have known it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Things are so mysterious that cannot be explained in the Badlands. Isn't that right? So me and a friend of mine will hunt them on the 13th of every month during a full moon and a thunderstorm by slingshot. <laughs> Shot. Oh no! There he is, right there. Your one and only jackalope. You can purchase one too, right here at Wall Drug. Or you can go look for one on the 13th by the moon if you bring your slingshot. A unicorn. And a Bigfoot. And a Bigfoot. <laughs> it's a Bigfoot leading a unicorn yep. carrying Carry a jackalope. jackalope. <laughs> that's I'm, cool. I'm getting that for Jeff. I'm sorry. That's all. I know what we're getting for Cheryl. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, <laughs> no. All right, Chris. We're going to be saying goodbye to our friend, Chris James. Did you get your free bumper sticker, Chris? There it is. I think it was, uh, they were out of the green ones when we brought you here for the first time in the summertime. And we are going to head out of Wall and head on down to Rapid City, Black Hills, Harley Davidson. And there goes Chris and we're ready to roll. Okay, we are here at Harley Davidson, Rapid City, Harley Davidson, Black Hills, Harley Davidson. The rally at exit 55 goes on here at Sturgis and this entire parking lot and that entire parking lot all the way back there is usually filled with all kinds of vendors. It's usually completely jam packed with motorcycles, all of this area up through here. Let's go into Black Hills, Harley Davidson and check this out. 
Oh yeah, smell that new motorcycle smell. Oh, that's nice. All right, Alan. I heard that. I don't know if our viewers heard that or not, but we won't repeat it. Look at that though. It does get you a little, your heart racing a little bit. Look at all the bikes. One of the premier dealerships in all of America right here. Hey, we're gonna check out and see if our good friend and daughter of our dearly beloved Paul Mitchell is working here today and say hi to her. Those V rods. William Daniels. Look at this. Look what's on their showroom floor. Stopped in there, we seen our friend Kelsey, and uh, which is Paul Mitchell's daughter. She was great, lovely, lovely girl. So since we have heard from our friend Chris Wall, you know, and his beautiful wife Lynn, who live over there in Washington State, and we got the weather report from them that it's going to be dumped on in Idaho and Spokane with snow and tomorrow. We're not in no hurry, so we're just going to go down the road here, maybe to Belfouche and have an early evening. So let's get on down there because there's no hurry because we won't be able to get over that pass tomorrow. All right, let's go. once again and uh, we're trying to make sure that we've got enough parking space for all three of us to be parked out here all night long and uh, it's starting to get dark now and we're just going to wait and take that 212 across Montana tomorrow morning. It's gorgeous. You're not going to want to miss it. Maybe we'll see some pronghorn antelope. See you tomorrow. Good night you guys. Say hey to Nick May, fellow transporter What's for Team up? RV. There, we, we passed him the other day. He had some truck problems, oh, and Randy's now kind of I know we have been goofing off. You guys know we've been goofing off at Wall Drug with Alan and Jeff and at Harley Davidson, and now they've caught back up with us. They're trying to get over Missoula and uh, the Idaho Pass tomorrow, and we've just gave them the wonderful news. Yep that it is going to be probably a no-go for tomorrow because we wouldn't get there till late in the afternoon. So yep. that's why we're just taking our time. Well, Nick, nice talking, to you. Nice talking to you. Appreciate it. You YouTube guys, that's another, this is a great, he's got a great source of information. We've been passing on a lot of great information. That's one great thing about this job. Well, good morning, everyone. We are, we are here in Belfouche, South Dakota. And we are getting ready to roll across 212 across Wyoming and into Montana. That usually takes uh, four hours, I think, to get onto the other side. Or, well, it's all two lane for about four hours. And then we'll hit back up with I-90, which runs into I-94. Our fuel stop today is Billings, Montana. And then we're just gonna travel on it. We can probably make it to St. Regis where the best milkshake in the world is. Good morning, YouTube world. Good morning to Alan Robinson. Yep. Yeah, if you want right? to say my middle name, that's fine. <laughs> I will cut that out. <laughs> I will completely bleep that out. So you just heard that little bleep. I bleeped that middle name out. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get rolling. Alan, you be safe today. Oh, yeah, you do the same, and I'll be right behind you. You know, we're going to see some beautiful territory between here and there. And I'm going to show it to you. And Alan, I'll point out all the pronghorn to you. you to... Uh, that'd be fine. You feel like counting I'll, pronghorn? I will count them with you, and I'll show you all the dirty trucks that are coming back out of the west, <laughs> so we know what we got to look forward to. Exactly. If all, if all of these 
trucks and cars coming from the west towards us are covered with snow. We got, yeah. we got a we're ride. Gonna, <laughs> we're going to take an extra long break at Montana's Best Steakhouse. <laughs> All right, come on, let's go. Let's see this beautiful scenery here in Montana. Coming into Brodus, Montana, and I really like this little town right here. Jeff and Alan are fueling up. So this is our fuel discount stop between here and Missoula. I checked the radar and it is snowing like crazy on Lookout Pass. We'll probably only make it to Missoula. We're not sure where we're going to make it today. All I know is that that pass is ridiculous. It's getting dumped on with snow. So we're just gonna have a good day today i am fueling up once again here and um i don't have the figures for you right now but i will later on about how much fuel i put into this canna dream class b motorhome getting paid only 87 cents a mile See? and i don't know how motorized drivers are doing it if they don't have a transportation back to Indiana like I have with Jeff. Me and Jeff working as a team with being motorized and drive away, that works really well. So we've been on the phone all day with different transporters getting all kinds of information. But um, rates are dropping. There are loads on the board but rates are dropping and the rates are getting to the almost ridiculous stage. <laughs> to Big Timber, just on the other, you know, an hour or so outside of Billings, Montana. The wind has picked up, and it was 24.9, and blowing those guys around too much. Um, so we are stopped here to let the wind subside, and just giving it an hour, it's gradually going down. It's like 23 something, but the gusts are pretty hard, and so we are just giving it just a little time um, to calm down because we can't roll if it's sustained at over 25 miles an hour and there's really no place to stop not much between Big Timber and Livingston and it looks like it's calming down so we should be able to roll in about a half an hour so we're just we're just chilling there's there's Alan he's parked beside me and Jeff rolled up to up there so he can use the facilities Okay, I'll let you know that so far um, I have made it to Big Timber, Montana with this unit, this can of dream. It's 22 foot long and um, I got paid, this pays 80, right now it pays 87 cents a mile. I'm going for 2,300 miles. So your gross payment comes out to be $2,001. Usually about a third of your gross is going to be taken up in fuel with the way fuel prices are between a third and a half of whatever your gross is but like i said i'm hoping that what i spend in fuel for this 
and what Jeff has spent in fuel, which I don't know what that has been so far with his unit. By the old time it's said and done, that $2,000 will pay for my fuel and his fuel so that we can keep all of his gross all the way out. Um, I think he's getting something like um, $1.78 to go um, 2,296 miles, I think it is. So we'll get to keep that, hopefully. Right, that's it. That's just it. We're just sitting here waiting the wind out here in Big Timber, Montana. And we called today, called our dealership. Is there any way at all you can accept um, a Saturday delivery? And um, they said no. They, they have an RV show, so there's no way that they can accept on Saturday. So we have, we have to wait until Monday, uh, first thing Monday morning at 8.30 on Monday to deliver. So we have three days to get it there, so we're just taking our time. It looks like Jeff is ready to go. There's Alan. Wave, Alan. All right, we're ready to roll. Okay. We have decided, I mean, after debating for like an hour and a half whether we should roll on, because it was still pretty early. Like, it was like 4.30 when we got here. And this wind is ridiculous. It is blowing. It is 36 at the airport. It's reported it's 36.9 sustained wind and 50 mile per hour gusts. It's ridiculous outside. So... We shut it down here to see what was gonna happen. Al came and gotten the truck with us. They did some tractor research or something up in the front. Tractor research? That's not the fun side of RV transport. It is. <laughs> okay, so we have just, after about an hour and a half of me and Alan going back and forth, looking at all kinds of road conditions. I-90 across, lookout passes closed due to semis blocking the lanes anyway yep so, so we, we don't even know if we're going to be able to get across lookout pass tomorrow nope but i know one thing what we stopped here at yellowstone truck stop and i had me a shower mm -hmm. there's deers frolicking in the field over there deers. let me show you looked at the weather report it looks like it's even going to get windier tonight there's calling for gale force winds 56 mile per hour sustained winds we are at and parked at an angle so that you never want to park your your camper at a, the side of yep. the wind so we are parked at an angle where the wind is blowing to our back so um and hopefully it'll stay that way yeah but man it is blowing it's crazy so we're going to try and get out of here at 7 a.m. in the morning. Can I get you up at 7? Well, I don't know. He's rubbing his head. Look at that. He just starts rubbing his head all the time when he gets that sleepy. I'm sleepy. Yeah, you need to go to sleep. It's time to get in the back. Yep. Time for the pants to come off. <laughs> yes. In any case, we're going to try and leave at that window time of 7 o'clock so we can get to Lookout Pass by about 1 p.m. tomorrow and try and pass. 
get over I don't know if I'll be able to or not. I don't even know if we'll be able to get across the pass. Well, see, no, I don't know if I'll be able to get up because this wind is rocking the truck. It is. And it's like I'm a little baby in a cradle. You are a little big baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm a little baby in a cradle. Take that Rock as a big baby, baby in the tree. Oh, yeah, so it makes me sleepy. Yeah. Well, you'll sleep good tonight then, because it's rocking it, rocking and rolling up here. I know, I, Cheryl. Yeah. I really think it's time for me to take my pants off. That's our clue. Good night, y'all. Bye. Good night. See you in the morning. <laughs>
All right, let's get us a cheeseburger. What about you guys? I don't know. The food uh, might not be that good here. They look pretty stiff. Even I'm in the pool. Oh, there's one right there. This is not officially the 50,000 silver dollar. This is the 81,497 today's total silver dollars. And this is the cafe area. We're gonna get us the cheeseburger here. Okay, Jeff, what did we get? We got the silver dollar silver bar. Dollar burger. Here's what it looks like. It's got mushrooms on it, good grief. Oh no, what, what's happened? Uh, I'll pick the mushrooms off. Uh, it's got <laughs> mushrooms on it. Alan, what did you get? You got the All regular right, cheeseburger. The regular old cheeseburger. Okay, we stopped here at the Idaho permit station, Hagen, Montana, to get our Idaho permit. We're about 10 miles going over Lookout Pass, and look at this. Oh, this is awful. And we gotta go over the pass. That's awful. This is the place where we get our permit. We've really got a snowing coming down. We have our permit that we have to take to our windshield. The sun is trying to come out, but it's still snowing. We're just gonna take it slow and easy. They lifted the chain laws, so we're good to go. Let's do this thing. Let's roll.
We've actually got two hotel rooms. Yes. And he's over there. Um, he's over there. there. <laughs> because he he's don't here have right. no pants on. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I already took my pants off. That's why I'm sitting between why, them. Between <laughs> I'm the barrier yeah. between the no pants man and the on pants man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm sitting between. Yeah, I took my pants off And I have but, pants on. <laughs> I always have pants on. My pants never come off. In any case, we want to tell you and wrap up what all happened today because I'm driving, so I really can't do video while I'm driving uh, other than, you know, what's coming straight out of the dash. We had the whole, um, maybe we could get across lookout pass, maybe we can't. Other transporters were stuck with the chain laws being... Uh, into effect, yeah. Were in effect until like what, 12 o'clock? Yeah, today. so they dropped the chain law in effect just maybe 30 minutes before we crossed. Yeah. So then, then we headed on down here up the road and we realized we're only like four hours from delivery and we can't deliver till Monday and today's Friday, so that's why we're here. That's why we're we a have hotel. a hotel room. Right. So we're going to do our reset. Reset. And then right we can here. start on a fresh clock and maybe we can get a reload or something out of Pendleton uh, after we deliver on Monday. Yeah. On a fresh clock. So that's how we that's, roll. That's, that's the war thinking. But we wanted to tell you to what happened today. We wanted to tell you to how we were unable to help our company out today. We well, had a few times that we said we can't help. So. Okay, so we were in Clinton, Montana. I get a call from our dispatcher saying, Cheryl, can you help me out? And I'm like, of course, Judy, what do you need? And she wanted, what had happened is they had a sick driver who was pulling a show unit that needed to go to Sandy, Oregon by tomorrow. And it has to be delivered because it's going to a big RV show. Yeah, and, and I was like, yes, let's go help this man. Let's help them. And Al said, no way. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't say he that. He didn't say that. No, so I told Judy. I was trying to give you ideas on how to be able to do we it. We did. <laughs> we did. So I told Judy, I said, um, let me pull over in the rest area, talk with Jeff and Al, and see how we can get this to work to get his unit to his show um, so that it would be at the show, because that was the priority. That was to, yeah, it had to be there tomorrow. I had to get back and get her in to get more waiting. And there was just no way to do it. Because he was in Three Rivers, Montana. We were in Clinton, Montana. Now we were already two on... and a half hours past Three Rivers, Montana. Yeah. He... Yeah. And and it was it. The roads were kind of treacherous between Butte and there. So there was snow all over the ground. And we, I said, I'll call you back in a few minutes, Judy, and we'll work this out. Well, once I looked it up on my phone, Three Rivers, Montana was two and a half hours back east. And we still had loads on. Yeah. I have a load, Jeff has a load, Alan has a load. All going to the same, well, we so, and Jeff are going to the same place. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we just couldn't figure out how to make it work out. So we had to call Judy back and tell her that we just couldn't figure it out. By the time we called her back, should already come up with a secondary plan. A secondary plan. Because basically, really quick, to wrap it up, it would have been two and a half hours back to pick his unit up. I would have had to have Monday. left, left, left what you would have had to leave your unit that you're delivering on Monday, pick up his unit, mm -hmm. and then we would have had to go two and a half hours back to Clinton, and then another nine and a half hours over to Sandy, Oregon, drop his unit off tomorrow, come back nine and a half hours and another two and a half hours, pick Jeff's unit up and then go back and dr go all the way up to Abbotsford. It was just too much. Too much running around mm -hmm. and, and just too much the logistics legal. was not there. It just wasn't going. I mean, there was no yeah. way we could have made that happen and get mm -hmm. it delivered there anyway tomorrow by nine o'clock. But the pass wasn't even open at the time. No, a change nope. required. But that's how we could so, not uh, help our yeah. company out um, as much as we do because you know I'm always telling you help your company out and you will move up the ladder in the ranking of drivers because the more you can do for your company they, the, re they recognize it yeah, the more they do for you and so 
But this, we just couldn't do it. I mean, we hate it. We've always stepped up to the plate when they've asked us to help them out. But this, this time. Was one time when we couldn't, and I really hate that we couldn't. Yeah. So that's it. And now we have two days to, two goof, days off, to goof off. And we're going to get some good rest um, tomorrow. We're going to get a whole reset in. Get a whole reset. Get a whole reset. And then Sunday, all we have to do is go across Snoqualmie and up to. Um, Abbotsford, Abbotsford deliver Monday morning. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, easy, so easy. all that we got left is to cross a terrible, horrific pass. And we ended up getting over the other one, and it it was it was dicey some places. We had to use four wheel drive to get over. Yeah, there was just some Jeff slipping and sliding. Yeah. Cheryl managed to get up there. Mm -hmm. yep, but My motorhome, Mike, that Class B motorhome, I didn't have any problems with it whatsoever. The no tires worries. were good on that can of drink. What are you averaging, by the way, on your miles per gallon? Close to 12. <laughs> and you? Eight. And you've got the big I heavy the fifth big wheel. Yeah. yeah. It's just killing me. And, and you, the last night's yeah. wind. Oh, the wind. Oh, the wind was brutal. When we shut Ooh. down in Livingston, Man, that wind was tough. we had 39.4 was the sustained wind with 50 mile an hour gusts. Mm. Right when we shut it down in Livingston the night before. And then, and then through the night, I it was shaking like yeah. crazy. Really like, nice. They were saying it could get up to 80 mile an hour gusts. Yeah, they, I think they shut that section that of section freeway the down. Was closed. You know, this was one of those nights where I didn't get any sleep. You'd think the truck would be rocking and I could sleep like a baby rocking. No. <laughs> it's like a hurricane. Yeah, that, didn't all... <laughs> that didn't bother me though. It was ever 15 minutes. Jeff, Jeff, the truck's going <laughs> to blow over. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff. Is the trailer all right? It was ridiculous. No. I, I got no sleep. Putting the dollies down on my trailer mm -hmm. and trying to keep it. And we place. parked. Remember, if you've got a bunch of wind coming, don't park sideways to where the wind is hitting you. We parked at a, a place where the wind was hitting Behind us to the us. back. And it still shook us. And it still us. shook mm -hmm. us crazy. Well, that's it for tonight. We're going to be ready to roll out of here two days from now and go across Snoqualmie Pass and up past Seattle and um, get up this thing's delivered on Monday. All right, we'll see so that you. that means I can go two days without pants. Yeah. <laughs> he has no I'll pants I'll be over there, on. he'll be here. He has no pants on now. I know you know. I should have came over with no pants. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> this isn't that kind that of video. <laughs> that would have been weird, Al. Uh, no. <laughs> no, we're all going to go around with no pants. No, that's not happening. Everybody, we don't do that. First of all, everybody knows I hate pants. <laughs> you hate pants. <laughs> and so, I knew when I came over, they weren't going to be on. You know, that's normal. <laughs> that's normal. But in any case, nothing weird like that happens. But we do love joking about it and having a good time. So That's you guys, yeah, it's all, all about. it's all fun. So we will see you two days from now. But for you guys, it's only going to be a matter of seconds. So stay tuned. We'll be seeing you Sunday morning. Let's roll. Good night, everybody. Good night. Night. Meanwhile, over the weekend, while we are doing our reset, we have met. Chris Wall and his beautiful wife Lynn right here. Here they've taken us out to Sporty's Bar and Grill here in Moses Lake, Washington. And look at the food that we're about to eat. Now this is the great thing about RV Transport. They have been following the Transport Bandits since like we began. Like so they're they're bandits. They're one of our first bandits. Fantastic people right here. We love them. We talk to them on the phone all the time. Chris and Lynn, we love you guys. Thanks for bringing us out for lunch today. But take a look at what we're having. All right, Alan, you got the uh, the hamburger steak. This is a chicken fried steak. Jeff got some chicken fried steak, hamburger steak. But now look at Lynn's Reuben. That looks awesome. Yeah. So that's all right. We've got a great meal going here in Sporty's Bar and Grill here in Moses Lake. This is a great place to come get some lunch. We're ready to roll. Apollo over and out.
Let's go over Snoqualmie. Washington, which is literally like a mile from the border and we are going to park it right here all three of our rigs that way we'll be right at the border tomorrow morning and we're only like what eight miles away from our delivery and Al and us it's pretty early it is it's only what a, time on the west coast I don't know what time it is here. it's like five o'clock or something four o'clock 417. 417. We've had a leisurely day Boy, today. It's been a lazy Sunday. It's okay because we can't deliver till tomorrow morning. But we parked right here because there's no really I couldn't find any parking in Abbotsford. But it says this overnight parking rate. So as far as I know, we're gonna pay the uh, five dollars and then the ten dollars for the campers and RVs rate. So we're gonna go right in here and pay our rate. If I don't get run over first. We will see you in the morning to make delivery to Abbotsford and then I'm taking mine on over to Delta. Well, good morning. We are here at the um, Boomtown in Sumas, Washington. That's where we stayed for the evening. And we are going to get those delivered. We can't cross the border, which is only like a half a mile down the road. Say hello to Alan. He's there waving at you in his truck. Jeff's in the truck. I've got mine going. It's like quarter to eight. We can't leave till eight because they don't accept till 8.30. And our, their dealership is only like 10 miles across the border. So we don't need even need to leave until eight o'clock because it doesn't open till 8.30 for a delivery. And then Jeff will follow me over to Delta BC to deliver my Canada Dream. All right, so we are going to have a great day. I'm going to get back in the truck with Jeff today, which is always a good thing because I love to be with my sweetheart. All right, well, the sun is really in my eyes. We're going to go now and get delivered in Abbotsford, British Columbia. 
And make sure you follow the signs for trucks and commercial vehicles because it does not go straight up the road. That's for regular passenger cars. Go for trucks and commercial vehicles. And here's the border of Canada, right here. You made it through, easy peasy. Just show them your ACI manifest for the unit and your passport. Tell them we'll be here for one day, no alcohol, no tobacco, and then we're through. He said, have a good day. Welcome to British Columbia. This would be Abbotsford. And now we'll jump on one going west towards Vancouver. We've got Alan has pulled up right behind Jeff. They're going to get checked in and then they'll follow me over to Delta, British Columbia. Jeff has disengaged and the lady is checking damage only and then she'll check in Al and then I'll deliver my can of dream over to Delta, British Columbia. We got delivered. We well, sure they did. Got delivered. We got delivered. I still got my can of dream to deliver, but we're going to wrap up this video right here running with the bandit crew Alan. Yep, and I want to thank the bandits for allowing me to stick with them. Yep, and you actually had some fun side of our transport on the I way did. out here. I got to see a couple things that I did, that I didn't never seen and I also enjoyed my extra time. Extra time extra because we were time. in such a rush <laughs> to get out here. But we might be in a rush getting back to Goshen because there's nothing coming out of Pendleton. So we do have to get back to, to Goshen to get another, the next unit that we're going to go, and we have no idea where that's going to be. Well, we have to find the hot springs on the way home. Hot springs on the way home? Nah, maybe I might have to tag along on that. Yes. <laughs> well, Alan's going to head down since I've got extra miles to put on in Canada, but it's kind of a triangle, so we might meet back up with Alan here in a little while, yep. and then we'll head back we'll to Goshen. We'll see where we're at. Yeah. i got to go get my dirty big truck wash. Yep. And we're going to, me and Cheryl's going to take our time and do everything we can to avoid Alan. Yeah, yeah. Alan, because you know how it is. Yeah. I'll, I'll be home Wednesday and they'll be home Friday. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Alan, what did you average uh, miles per gallon uh, with that big uh, CDL pickle? 8.6. 8.6. Jeff, you even know what you got? 17.2. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a lot. Look at that, his nose is getting long. Yeah. Uh, 12.2. 12.2, and I was getting 13.1 in that can of dream. So that's some of the figures for you right there. Thank you for joining in on our Transport Bandits channel. I hope you like this video. Please press that like button, and Jeff and Alan, subscribe. Subscribe <laughs> now. That's it for us. Thank you for watching Transport Bandits. Out. Out. I'm just adding this little insert in here after I delivered so that you guys know what my fuel was on that can of drink. I spent... And on a side note, I got my little honey back in the truck with me. Back in the truck. I mean, that's nice. Yeah. So now I'll know how fast to go, how slow to go. When to turn your blinkers when off. When to turn my blinkers on off. When <laughs> to turn my windshield wipers on and off. Yep. I got no worries now. I know. But I'm going to let you know that um, on that can of dream, I spent $576.99 on the fuel cost, which is a gas situation, going 2,300 miles. Mm -hmm. And at 87 cents a mile, I got paid about $2,001. Mm -hmm. So that was only a little, that was what, one third? Of my you pay, did, you did real good on that. Goes towards gas, so we did. I did a real good profit on that. So, like I said, I paid for my fuel. I'm going to pay for Je most of Jeff's fuel. All of my fuel. All of your fuel, and then we get to keep Jeff's profit from his run that he just delivered. So it works. That's a great way to do it. 
However, we have no backhaul back to Goshen, so we have to now factor that in. That's alright. It's alright. Maybe we'll stop and have some Maybe we'll stop and have some fun side of RV transport. Alright, I just wanted to let you know those quick figures. Thank you.